Good evening, church. I pray all has been well. Um, <clears throat> I pray the last time we gathered, uh, the message was a blessing to you. Um, um, today I have another word from the Lord, and um, it's a serious word. It's a very serious word, and um, it's needed, man. It's, it's heavy, man. He's shown a few things. Um, through a few visions, he's shown a, he's shown a few things um, that we, we that we don't need to take lightly, that we need to take very serious. And um, before we get into the word, church, um, let's pray. And I and I pray that you've been walking faithful faithful with the Lord, uh, obeying His will, and um, just yielding your heart to Him, growing in faith, um, really loving Him from a genuine, pure place in your heart for who He is and not what He can do for you. Okay, and um, so without further ado, um, let's pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, uh, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for never giving up on us, Lord. We thank you, we thank you for not leaving us all alone because you could have left us by, our, by ourselves, but instead you chose not to leave us as orphans but chose to be with us even to the end of this age. Um, Lord Jesus, we love you so much. and uh, We just want to say thank you, and we love you. you know, fill, fill us up today with your word. We need your word. Your words are life. Where other, where any other way, where other place can we turn, Lord? Where, or anywhere else, where can we turn to find life? Nowhere, because you is life, Lord. Lord, give us life today, Lord, um, by sitting in the presence of your word, Lord. Let us soak you up today, Lord. Um, Lord, clean us out, Lord. Let us be a dry sponge today, Lord, and soak up all that you have to give, not missing nothing. Lord, help us, Lord. Free our mind from distractions. Uh, purge our heart for any corruption, corruption or any pride or anything in our heart that's, that can disconnect us from receiving from you right now, Lord. Uh, I'll base our heart right now and put us in a humble place, Lord. Um, Lord, we love you so much, and we honor you and we need you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Um, church, I got a few things, uh, the Lord have been, um, I have a few things the Lord have been saying today. And, um, um, so before, before we get into the, uh, before we get into the word, before we get into the word, we are, um, yeah. Okay. First thing I want to say is, man, we put up, we exalt a lot of things in this life. We, 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 we exalt a lot of things in this life and we put a lot of stuff on a pedestal. We look, we put a lot of stuff at a high regard. But we don't put our salvation in a high regard. And we take for granted the grace that the Lord have given us through his sacrifice on his sacrifice on the cross, pouring out his blood for the sin of man. And we take that, we take that very we sometimes we can take that very lightly. And we forget that Jesus knew everything that he was suffering go through before he actually hit the cross. So he still had a choice to choose to not go to that cross, but instead he said, they won't live without me. Jesus, they won't live without me. So instead, he chose to bear that cross for us. He chose to lay himself down on that cross and pick himself up. He could have left us all by ourselves. He could have left us all alone to die. But instead, his love and grace and his mercy said, no, I love them and I want them to be with me. So I will bear this cross for them. I would be humili humiliated and broken before them. I would be broken for them. I would be bruised for their transgression because I want to see them. And man, we should not take that lightly because that is a high price that he paid for mankind on that cross. Okay? Okay, so let's move after hearing that. Let's move into what the lord is finna say okay um the lord showed me the lord showed me a vision the lord showed me a vision and um the first vision was a woman inside of the car the man was driving he picked the woman up he picked the woman up and um the woman was sick the woman was sick right but she was a famous woman she had fame she had car she she had cars she had houses she had bought islands she had everything she wanted, right? And then in the car, in the car, that woman that he picked up from the medical clinic started seducing him, but the Holy Spirit is the only one that saved that man. That man knew the knowledge of the scripture. He knew what the word said, but even in all his knowing, it took 
for the Holy Spirit to save him. Right? It took for the Holy Spirit to give him that answer. It took for the Holy Spirit to restrain for being totally seduced by that woman. Okay. So let's look at what the Lord was saying is now. That woman represent this world, right? Right. And notice the woman was picked up at a medical clinic, meaning the woman is sick. The woman is sick. So what the Lord is saying is this world is sick, right? Yes, yeah, she got fame. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she got wealth. Less she, yes, yeah, she got luxurious, right? Luxury. Yes, yeah, she got a lot of things in in this in this place that would make that would make her seem very attractive, right? That would make her seem very attractive, right? And she will try to seduce you, right? Because in the vision, in the vision, the woman was trying to seduce the man, trying to kiss him and do stuff. So this woman will try to do seduce you. This world will try to seduce you with her fame, with her luxury, with her great looks that make her look, look attractive. But the truth in the matter is she is sick. She is sick. And if you allow her to seduce you, you will be in a sick place as well. You will be in a sick place as well. You'll be in a sick place as well. And notice in all of the man's personal wisdom, he still could not fight off the woman. But she started to try to seduce him, but the Holy Spirit restrained, right? So even in all of your knowledge, it takes for you to obey the Spirit so he can guide you in all truth, how to restrain yourself from being conformed to this world, being totally seduced by this world. Because this world is sick. And if you don't obey the spirit of God, she will seduce you and you will become sick. And as a result, if you don't turn and be healed from that sickness in Christ Jesus, then you will burn forever when the Lord returns. Okay. And a lot of these visions, the Lord will use me as an example in this vision because he break, the, he break us first. People that he have called, he break us first to let us know that we are not exempt. And church, we are not exempt. Right. And we are not exempt. We have to obey the gospel of Christ Jesus through the person of the Holy Spirit, because he's the only one that can restrain us from being seduced by this world. And anybody that who do not have Christ, we should. Um, I pray that you, that, that you would run to the cross because he's the only one through him that can give us the Holy Spirit to not be seduced by this world. So if we don't have him at all. We don't have the Lord and the Holy Spirit. We don't have the, if we don't have the Lord, that means we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit. And because we're not filled with the Holy Spirit, we just would get totally seduced with no awareness that we've been seduced. And so, let's, man, obey the gospel of Christ Jesus. Let's obey the gospel of Christ Jesus. Now, the Lord showed this for a reason. It's very serious. Because this woman is trying to seduce us every day. Yeah. So um, it's very serious. Yeah, it's very serious because this woman is indeed trying to seduce us, seduce us every day. Okay. Um, the next vision, uh, the next vision, um, the Lord showed. Um, he woke he uh, he woke me up in the vision and um, it was he showed skyscraper buildings and he sold he showed celebrities. Um, people building empires, right? People building empires, and then he showed this big rope hanging from the sky down into the earth, right? And then he showed this man swinging on the rope around each round, each side of town, right? Then he said he's showing this rope swinging. Well, he showed a man swinging on. He showed a man uh, swinging on the rope. The man was banging on the sky, trying to get in, but 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 could not get in. And this rope swung around each side of town. So let's break down what the Lord was saying about this vision, right? Right, right. Okay. Now, notice that he said he showed celebrities, right? People building empires, right? Right. Empires, right? Skyscraping buildings, right? Empires, right? Monuments, <clears throat> right? Right. Celebrities, people we look up to, right? Right. So, what, yeah, people some of us look up to, right? Right. We got, we got, we got people that we look at as celebrities, a U.S. celebrity that we look up to, right? So let's yeah let 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 let's be honest about it right so 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 um, let's look at what the Lord is saying let's look at what the Lord is saying about this vision let's look at what the Lord is saying about this vision now 
what the Lord is saying, all of us that are building empires, no matter if you're a celebrity, no, no, no matter if you, uh, no matter if you're not a celebrity or you just trying to build a monument for yourself, right? Right? These people was building monuments, building empires, skyscrapers, right? The Lord seeing all of this, He's showing that men is building empire, they building this, they building that. He showed a big rope hanging from hanging from the sky down into the earth, right? And because they was building building these empires, they did not see the rope that was hanging from the sky. But after the but when the time came, but when the time come where all where they won't have all have, have all this, right? Then they see the rope that was hanging, right? What is that rope? God hand reaching down into the earth, reaching down into the earth, saying, Hey, come to me, my son is near. Come to me, my judgment is coming. Come to me. Don't store up treasures in this earth, man, that will pass away, but store up to you fruits that will lead to life in my son, Christ Jesus. But they could not see this at first because they were building money, man. They were building empires. Right? Right. But after all this, they seen this rope. The man was climbing, climbed up a rope, banging on the sky. Bang, the man was on a rope, banging on the sky. But could not get into, get uh, could not get in. What did this guy? He was representing, or he was, it was representing heaven. So this man was banging, saying, "Please let me in, please let me in, please let me in." But then nobody answered. That about like you sitting in your house, somebody knocking outside the door. You know they there, but you don't. You choose not to answer because you never knew them, Jesus. And what the Lord would say is, in that day. Either well done, my good and faithful servant, or depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And he's saying men building all these empires, they doing all of this stuff, but not reaching out, grabbing my hand because they're, my hand is finna come back in, man. The, the, the Lord has said, my hand, or the Lord has said, my hand is finna come back in. You know what? Soon this is finna be de dealt with, right? And people will be crying, right? People will be begging people better but guess what he said i never knew you this man was banging on the sky banging on the sky to get in but he could not get in and notice that the lord showed that this rope swung around the whole town so what the lord was saying is this will happen all around this will happen all around the world right people will be begging weeping and gnashing the teeth they will be begging to get in but it will be too late because you was building monument you was building empire for yourself and build an empire for yourself instead of reaching out and grabbing my hand when you had a chance. Man. And this the this the torture because the and this the thing. The man knew the man seen the rope and he tried to climb up. Which mean he was aware, man, right? Which mean he was aware that he have heard he have heard the truth before, man. But instead, he was too. He, but instead, he chose to build, store up stuff in this world. He chose to store up stuff in this world instead of reaching out to the hand of God. Because guess what? After he came down off that empire, Jesus. After he came down off that high horse, right, right. After he turned, he like, man, let me climb up this rope, man. You no, know, let me try to escape. Let me try to escape. But it was too late. It was too late. It was too late. The man could not enter no matter how much he banged the sky no matter how much he cried no matter how much he begged he could not enter because it he could not enter because it was too late and the lord say to us today if we build these empire if we uh, build these monuments instead of reaching out to his hand. We will be just like that man that was hanging on a rope. We will be just like that man that was banging on the sky. We will be just like that man that knew, knew that man, this is why I need to climb to escape this, but it will be too late. We will be just like that man that was hanging from that rope, begging to get in, but we won't be, we won't, we won't be able to get in, but we will be thrown outside where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We throw it into the outer darkness where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth because we chose not to obey the gospel of Christ Jesus. We chose to rebel the hand of God, even when we seen the rope, right? Even when we seen the hand of God hanging down the earth, we say, no, I'm going to build my own empire, man. I'm going to build my own thing. I'm going to do my own thing instead of running a race that the Lord has set before me through the gospel of Christ Jesus. No, I'm going to build my own empire instead of doing that. And as a result, Man will be banging and the Lord will not hear. He will cry.
the Lord will not respond. He would do all of this stuff, but it would be too late because the Lord have retrieved those who have obeyed the gospel. And they're going to forever be with the Lord. But those that have rebelled will be in a lake of fire, tormented forever. Man. Let us not be like that. And let's not be like that, church. Let's obey the gospel of Christ Jesus and those that who, who don't know the Christ Jesus. Man, please uh, receive the grace of the Lord by faith in him and obey the gospel because he's the only way where man will be able to get into heaven. Right? He will be the only way man will be able to get into heaven and escape the judgment. Right, right. The judgment of which is God pouring out his wrath. That is the only way where man will be able to escape the wrath of God. It's by faith. We don't want to be that man that hanging on the rope, crying, begging to get in. We want to be the people that God have retrieved because we seen the hand of God. We was watching. We seen the hand of God. And we climbed up. You know what? We obeyed the gospel before it was too late. All right? Um, okay. Um, another vision what the Lord is saying, man. Um, another event, another thing with the Lord is saying, man, the Lord is going to deal with these. The Lord is going to deal with false prophets. He's going to deal with people that is leading his people astray. The Lord does not like this. He's looking in the earth. He see all of this. Man is not, will not be without excuse. You won't say I did not know. You won't say that I, I did not know. I didn't see because he said you can look at creation and see my glory. And for those and for those who know the truth, but choose to hold it unrighteously unrighteously and choose to teach it unrighteously um because of self because of self again selfish gain holding the doctrine of balaam right the doctrine of the nickel because you choose to do this for your selfish gain and choose to lead god people astray holding the truth and the righteousness the lord would deal with you severely right the lord said repent turn from this wickedness or when i come i will fight against you with the sword of my mouth this is what the lord said the lord showed a vision of because in Matthew 24, the Lord, the Lord said, Matthew 24, that in the, these times will lie ahead, these times will lie, lie ahead through the persecution and tribulation. The Lord said, people will hand, people will, uh, your own people will hand you over, right? And right now, even in these times we're coming, and even in these times right now, we have people personally in our lives that will persecute us. We have people personally in our lives that will persecute us, the ones that we love, and we also will face this that is coming and see what we have to understand the Lord have shown the Lord have shown this vision right here the Lord showed the vision where uh, it was like all of us when all of us all of us was in the field and then uh, people was getting the people started getting incarcerated and the people that was getting the, the people that in uh, that uh, the people that gave us over was people that we knew so the people that we knew had us incarcerated right and as we was incarcerated we went into this we went into the jail when we was in the jail they was feeding people food from this old wooden box, right? And then another deputy got mad at the other deputy inside of the jail because the deputy exposed the true reason why we was in the jail, right? The first deputy said, ah, oh, they got locked up because they were stealing mashed potatoes. The other deputy, the other deputy exposed them. He said, no, it's because they followed Jesus. And then us that was us that uh, got incarcerated, we was in there warning the people, telling the people the truth about that the people that was over the jail man the people that had imprisoned the people the people that had imprisoned the people was feeding them food from an old wood box and the old wood box had a symbol of witchcraft on it man. and the other day the lord revealed what that was what that meant right the lord reviewed the doctrine of devils the same as witchcraft so what the Lord was saying is the people had it, the, the, the people that was over the jail had imprisoned the people that was over the jail had imprisoned the people right, and teaching them doctrine of devils. They were eating food, right? They were eating the food that was the doctrine of devil. Man. Man. And the Lord said, release my people, set them free. All of you false prophets, release my people, turn from this wickedness, or I'm going to fight against you with the, with the words of my mouth, with the sword of my mouth when I return. Release my people. When I return, I will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Stop feeding them the doctrine of the, the, doctrine of the devil. Stop feeding them the doctrine of men. Give them the absolute truth from my word. Some of you, I did not even call to do this. 
I will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Man, inside of there. Right. So it's a lot of people today are, 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 are imprisoned by false prophets. It's people today are imprisoned by false teacher where they think where, where you think they're feeding you truth, but they really feeding you doctrine of devils. So you have to study to show yourself approved. You have to study, get in the scriptures, have a relationship with Christ Jesus for yourself so you can prove what the perfect will of God is because you have the mind of Christ. When you don't have the mind of Christ, you will only believe what other men say because you don't know the truth for yourself. And one thing about the enemy is he will give you the, he will give you the truth in life form. Right. And what these men is, is giving you the doctrine of devils, giving you the truth in a lie form. Man. So we have to warn each other. We have to hold each other accountable. We have to warn our brothers and sisters that men are doing as witchcraft, feeding people doctrine of devil, saying that they speak in the truth, saying that they speak in the truth. That comes from our Lord. The Lord said it is not so. You're not speaking my word. You're not speaking my truth. Some of you I didn't even call to do this. You're not speaking my truth. You're speaking the doctrine of devils. When I come, I'm going to deal with you severely. Repent, turn from this wickedness. I will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Church, let's wake up. The Lord love us. He given us this so we can wake up. We can see that the end is the end and the end is coming and the Lord is finna return his shovel and drill for day. Come out of the imprisonment of from the doctrine of devils. Seek the truth. Be lovers of truth because in these time what's coming, people will be deceived by strong delusion because people are not lovers of the truth. Who is the truth? Christ Jesus. Because they don't love Christ Jesus, men will fall to the doctrine of devils. Men will want doctrine to tickle they that want doctrine that will tickle their ears. What is that? Doctrine of devils. Because God said there is no lie in the truth. There's no lie in the truth. The truth is absolutely truth. There's no lie of the truth. It's just truth. And anytime a man of uh, anytime a man try to teach you and give you the truth in life form is not of God. I don't care how it look, how good it may sound, but if it ain't from the Lord, then it's not truth. Then it's not truth. So, man, look at this vision. It took for some people to come inside of this prison to warn the people that, hey, they've been feeding you food. That is the doctrine of devil. You've been eating food from the doctrine of devil. The Lord said that today. To some of us. Look, come out of that imprisonment. They have been feeding you food from the doctrine of the devil. You need the truth. You need to be set free. Right? And in the time that lied ahead, also with this vision, that some of our love, some people we know will hand us over. We have to have a genuine love for Christ Jesus to be able to stand in that day. Because people are in prison spiritually, and in that time, people, people will hang you over. Come out of that prison spiritually so you can see clearly in the physical asset of what you need to be seeing and what is going on so you won't get lost because your heart is far away from the Lord. All right? Another thing the Lord have said, he said, the day is far spent, the night is coming. See, see, we doing a lot of running around, we doing a lot of running around, doing a lot of stuff instead of doing, instead of doing what matters. That, that is obeying the gospel of Christ Jesus. The Lord said, other he said, the day is far spent. He said, in my father's house is many mansions. If we're not so, I would have told you so. And the Lord been saying that a lot of us are living to stay in this world versus living to get out. A lot of us is trading heaven for earth. Why trade heaven for earth when earth is passing away when you should grab a hold to heaven, the new heaven, new earth, which is going to last forever? The Lord said a day is far spent. You know what he's saying? The time is almost over. Right. The time is almost over. Right. Night is coming, right? I always coming upon this world that man is not ready for. 
And the only way you will be ready is if your heart has been prepared by genuine love in Christ Jesus. Right. The Lord said the day is far spent. Right. Night is coming. And the Lord said, I'm going to come like a thief in the night. No one know the day nor hour when I will return. Right. But he also said, blessed is the man that watch and keep his garment. So when I return, I won't see a shame of his nakedness. So you have to you have to ask yourself, why would the Lord tell us uh, that I will come like a thief in the night? No one know the day nor hour, but tell us to watch. Right. So you ask yourself, ask yourself. Like, what is the point of watching when you're going to come like a thief in the night, right? 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 So, this is what the Lord said, right? 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 Because the Lord is absolute the truth, and there's no contradiction in what he's saying, right? So, this is what the Lord said. He broke this, he broke this down to me. This is what he said. He said, this is what he said. This is what he said. He said, son. He said, son. Think about it. If you tell your wife, if you tell your wife, hey, baby, I'm going to come home in a few hours, right? I want the house clean. I want the house clean. I want the house clean uh, before I come home, right? I want the house clean when I get home, right? Well, he said, son, you didn't tell her that you would come home at 1 o'clock. You didn't tell her you would come home at 2 o'clock. You didn't tell her you would come home at 3 o'clock. You didn't tell her you was coming home at 4 o'clock. You didn't tell her you would come home at 5 o'clock. You just said, hey, baby, I'm going to be home in a few hours, right? Right? So she can't wait to say, you know what? I'll wait to come to 2. I'll wait to, I'll wait to, I'll wait, I'll wait to 2 o'clock to clean up because you might come at 1. I can't wait to say I can't wait to say he gonna come at four o'clock because he might come at three. I can't say that I'll wait to five o'clock to clean up the house because he might come at four. I can't say I'll wait to one because he might come at twelve. See, he didn't give me at my husband did not give me an exact exact time of the hour that I would got when I would come home he just said I would be there in a few hours so my job is to just go ahead and clean the house so if he come at one two three four or five or at twelve I'll be ready when he get home because I have already did the work Man. so the Lord said blessed is the man that watch and keep his garment not saying that we don't have to watch because we have to watch when we look at the scripture we look at the world we see the events we can see that he's coming near that we need to be working on our heart getting our heart right and also, if we lose our life tomorrow, if we lose our life tomorrow, then we will be prepared because tomorrow some of us can lose our life. Right? So even preparing your life, taking it one day at a time. So if you lose your life tomorrow, you'll be safe. But also as well, when he returned, right, you don't know the day nor hour. You don't know the exact date or time. That don't mean that when he said you don't know the day nor hour that you don't supposed to be looking. No, he said watch. What I'm saying is, is guess what? I'm coming. The house is better be clean. I'm coming, baby. I'm coming home. You don't know if I'm coming at one, two, three, four, five o'clock. You don't know when exactly the date of time I'm coming, but you know I'm coming. So your best thing to do is just make sure the house clean. So when I do pop up, you'll be ready, and I'll be satisfied. And I would say, into it to what you stored up to yourself. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You done what the Lord told you to do. So the Lord said the day, the, the Lord said the day is far spent. Night is coming. Whether people, whether we believe in the night, night is coming. And we better be ready, man. N night could come tomorrow for someone. We can stop breathing, right? The next 30 minutes. Or it could be going tomorrow. You never know, right? And also, the hours at hand when the Lord's second return to this earth. It's coming after everything else it's done right he's outside so let's be prepared and be ready okay the Lord also showed he said there's a time coming where you won't be able to read my word therefore get it right now make sure your foundation is anchored in Christ Jesus see right now we got luxury luxurious right now to read the word well some some places around the country they can't read opening like that. Some places they have to hide to read the word. Some places they church even on the ground. They can't read it openly. Some people are getting put to death for the faith. Right now in, in America, we, we got the luxury, the lu luxury of reading the word. Right? Right? There's a time coming. There's a time coming where man, all around the world, man, listen to me. Man, there's a time coming. There's a time coming, man. There's a time coming. Well, some of us, there's a time coming where some of us won't be able to read the word. Right? We won't be able to openly read the word. Right? 
We won't be able to openly read the word. So the Lord said, man, you better eat my word now. Get it in you now. But there's a time coming that it's going to shake the world. Well, my word won't be accessible. My, well, my word, well, my word won't be as accessible with you. But you better have that word tattooed in your heart. You better be eating that word, loving me, getting me, filling yourself up with me, making sure your foundation is straight. Right. 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 And know, know the manual, right, which is my word, so you can stand in that day, right? You have to think about it, like. Think about it if you just bought, uh, think about it if you just bought, um, uh, think you just bought, like, uh, all of us that got children, you might have bought, um, a baby bed, a baby bed before, right? So, let's think of baby bed as something that requires you to use a manual to put it together, right? That required, that, that required you to use a manual to put it together, right? You never done this before. You never put it together before, right? Right? And you get the manual, you get the manual, you, you get the equipment with no manual, right? With no manual. Well, if you get the equipment with no manual, you don't even have, you don't even know how to start the process. You are completely lost. And if we don't use the manual, which is God's word, we will be completely lost because we have not obeyed the gospel and love of Christ Jesus, right? So you be st st instead of trying to figure the pieces out and you can't even, you don't even know where to begin because you don't have the manual. You 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 all over the place trying to put this stuff together. You putting together the wrong piece, not in the right place. You don't know where you're going with it. You don't know how to set it up because you don't have the manual, which is the word of God, which is Christ Jesus, right? But let's say if you receive the manual, right? Right? You receive the manual, right? You put it together, right? You have took it down. You have broke it down, put it together a few times. You have broken down. Put it together, put it together over and over again. Now, even if the manual is taken away, you can put the bed together without even looking at it. Even if you don't have the physical manual, because you have done it, because you have spent time putting it together over and over again, guess what? Even if you don't have the physical manual, manual, you still can put it together and it'll look like it's supposed to look because you had the manual in your heart. Jesus, man. The same thing with the word of God. We should live and love Jesus, spend time with him over and over, day in and day out. So when, whenever they want to remove the manual, we still can operate in the will of God through the person of the Holy Spirit who have trained us, right? Who is with us because we have took time to speak time with that manual and we know, it, we know how to operate in it and use it even if we don't have it physically in our presence, man. So, man, let's obey the gospel of Christ Jesus and be prepared, right? Another point, right? The Lord reiterating again. Don't be seduced by the fame of this world, the luxury, the money. Fear the Lord and free yourself from the darts of Satan, right? And see, the bribe of Satan, the bribe of Satan, this is this, this the Satan, this the bribe of Satan. It's to, get, it's to get you comfortable. It's to get you comfortable. He will give you the truth and life form all to make you comfortable right the bribe of this world right is comfort right? and the comfort and the comfort to the follower of jesus is a deception because this is not your home right? so what this world say hey do this do that get this do that get comfortable chill out it's okay it's okay. Take it easy. Do whatever you want. Build your, your mon mon monument. Make yourself great. Do this and do that. Right. And you know what you do in the spirit? You fall asleep. All right. Think about it. When you get off a long day of work, right? You get home. You take a shower. You eat. You get full. You kick your feet up. The next, the next thing you want to do next is you want to go to sleep. That's what this world do with us. That's what the enemy do in our flesh. Because the only thing in this world, the Lord have said, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the life, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, right? Right. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, right? So what he do is throw all of these three boomerangs at us, right? Do this, do that. You see this? You see that? Go get that. Go do this. And have you running, running, 
to the place where you get comfortable in this world, you kick your feet up and you go to sleep in your spirit and you no longer prepare yourself and are watching for the return of our Savior. And as a result, you have conformed to this world and you are dead spiritually. And when the Lord returns, he sees your shame and your nakedness because he don't see the spirit of God in you. He don't see the spirit of God in you. He don't see himself, man. See, how the Lord is going to know you when he returns is because he's going to see himself in you, Jesus. When he returned, he looking to see himself. He look, he, he's, God said his word is a mirror. Man. So God will use his word. If his word is a mirror, right? right? And when you look in the mirror, you see yourself. So when he returned, he's going to look at us, right? right? He going to see he gonna see that we obey his word that will make us look like a mirror image of him. And when he come back, when he don't see that mirror image of him, he going to say, I don't know you because I don't see myself. I don't know you. Who are you? I don't know you. Who are you? Depart from me. I don't know you. You don't look like me. Oh, he? Oh, yeah. He looked like me. Oh, look at his character. Yeah, he looked like me. Come in. Right? Because think about it. Today, man, we let those in of our own household, man. Right? And he, he, we let those in of our own household into our most secret place, right? The kingdom of heaven and new heaven and new earth, God is going to dwell there. And there is no sin that can dwell with Almighty God. The secret place, God have created a new heaven and new earth where he will come and dwell with us. That would be his secret place. And, and think about it. You won't let a stranger into your bedroom, right? The new heaven and new earth, God is going to dwell with us. That's going to be a secret place. That's going to be like his bedroom. He's not going to let some, he's not going to let a stranger in that secret place. He's going to blame, bring those who he have transformed into the image of Christ Jesus, right? who, who look like him, who look like his son. He would say, come here because I know you. Come into this place that you have stored up to yourself. Come into my secret place. I will be your God. Okay. So let's obey the gospel and we'll stay in the dark of the end, right? And the next thing the Lord said, have humility, right? And I was listening to the book of Esther the, Esther the other day, and it was powerful how, how this woman was given authority. This woman was given queen. She, was being a, she became a queen, but yet the woman was humble as if she was not. Man, a lot of time today, today, because we might have received authority, right? We think that authority cannot be stripped away. The Lord can strip authority. He raised up king. He set them down. Right? And also we think because of our authority, we don't supposed to humble ourselves before the Lord. Now look at Esther, man. The Lord showed me this. It was a powerful how this woman, this woman of God, this, this woman of God, right? God used this woman. She was given a, a, a great place inside of the king, but yet. She reverence him as she did not have that in front of the king. Man. Today, church, we have been given great authority in the sight of our King Jesus. Right? We have been given a great authority in the sight of our King Jesus. Yet we should still humble ourselves as if we did not have it at all because all things come from him. But some of us today is because we got in the authority, we think we can exalt ourselves higher than our king. New flash, we better abase ourselves because when he returns, he will humble us if we have exalted ourselves. Why, Lord? What is the evidence? Because he said, those who exalt themselves will be humble, but whoever humbles themselves will be exalted. So just like Esther had received great uh, authority, a great place inside of the king, she still humble herself. Humble herself because she reverenced the king. She knew who he was, right? She knew the authority he had. So even though he given her authority, she still humbled herself as if she did not receive it. Man. Today, even in our authority, that, the place that we have been given in the sight of our Lord Christ Jesus, we should still humble ourselves as if we did not have it all and say, Lord, even though I know you have given me this, I still humble myself as your servant. What do you need for me? Because I love you and I want to live to please your heart instead of my own. Jesus, man. Man. Let's live to please the Lord's heart. Let's just live to be obedient children, man. We're not adults. We are children, man. We're children of God. Those who are believe in Christ, Christ Jesus. Let's live to be obedient children and please our Father in heaven. Let him tuck us, bust up on him, up on his wing, pat us on the head, pat us on the back, pick us up and carry us on his shoulder like he, 
right, carry us on the shoulder because he carried us on his shoulder with that cross, right? right? So let's not get off his shoulder by disobeying his word, right? But let's stay up on his wing, right? Let's stay up on his wing, right? Because Christ Jesus was obedient to death. So you have to ask yourself, if the Lord, Jesus, we should live as he lived, right? We should live as the Lord lived. Well, the Lord was obedient to death. Because ask yourself, ask yourself, if the Lord, if the Lord, the Lord came into the earth, he knew that he came to do the Father's will, to sacrifice himself on the cross, right? To, to sacrifice himself on the cross, to die for the sins of the world, right? Well, you have to ask yourself, right? If the Lord would have started, be it started obedient, and he would have stopped at the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane, Gethsemane would we have been saved? No, if he would have started and stopped at the Garden of Gethsemane and never went to the cross, would he have been would, would we have been saved? No. Why? The Lord had to obey, right? He had to pick up that cross. He had to obey to the end for us to be saved. He had to walk that thing out, obey all the way to the end through his life and go to the cross for us to be saved. Same thing today, man. Right. God have given us great through our Lord Christ Jesus, but we have to obey all the way to the end. We can't stop, right, and turn back, right? Because get what Satan will try to stop that. How do we know? Because Peter stood in front of Jesus, right? And Jesus said, Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Right? Right? Right. So the enemy will come trying to stop you from picking up that cross, right? He was trying to stop you from enduring to the end. But you have to endure to the end. Because Jesus said, only those who endure to the end shall be saved. So ask yourself, if Jesus would have stopped at the Garden of Gethsemane, would we, would the world have been saved? No. The Lord obeyed to the end. What He obeyed to the cross. He endured to the end. And because He endured to the end, sacrificed Himself, we all were saved. Same thing today. If we endure to the end by faith, because the Lord Jesus, the Lord Christ Jesus had faith in his father in heaven. He believed in his father in heaven. And because he had faith, he believed and believed in his father in heaven, knew everything that the father had showed him. He obeyed, endured to the end, hit that cross and was saved and saved all of mankind. He, he, he obeyed his father's will to the end and he was and he saved all of mankind. Right. The same thing today. We have to obey our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. We have to obey the gospel of Christ Jesus to the end. If we do that until the end, we shall be saved. What is the evidence? Because the Lord said, if you I remained in my father love and I was exalted to the throne of my father, which means if we remain in our Lord Christ Jesus love, then we will be able to be we be able to reign with him on his throne, just like he reigned with the father in heaven, our father in heaven on his throne. Right. The same way Jesus obeyed, remained his father law, re re remained in his father love, right? He was able to reign with the Father in heaven. Like so, if we obey our Lord Christ Jesus to the end, we'll be able to reign with him and the Father on his throne because we remained in his love out of a pure place of love in our heart, right? Right. Through his sacrifice, we were made sons and daughters of God Almighty, man. Let's treasure it. Four things the Lord uh, left me with. Uh, he said, "Unvoid unsafe acts." I was taking a test um, at my job, going through training. The Lord spoke to me. He said, "Because the test was about unsafe acts," and the Lord spoke. He said, "He said, oh, another thing I want to share. One night I was sleeping. The Lord spoke, man. His voice was like washing rushing waters, man. It's so powerful how the scriptures just come alive. He spoke, man. He spoke one night, and his voice sounded like his voice sounded like rushing waters, right? And I was just hearing him." Saying, children, 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 God is gathering all his children in the spirit, his true followers, the obedient church. He's gathering all his children in the spirit right now as we speak. He's saying, children, children. It's like this big call in the spirit gathering all his children, right? Gathering all his children, right? Those that, that go, those gathering all his children for the return of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, right? Right. So now let's get back to avoid unsafe acts. The Lord said, avoid unsafe act. What is an unsafe act? Right. The unsafe, the unsafe act is conforming to this world. The Lord Christ Jesus said that is an unsafe act. Avoid unsafe acts at all costs. Avoid things that war against your soul. Avoid unsafe act. What is the unsafe act? 
that the Lord have talked about conforming to this world. Why is it? Why is conforming to this world is an unsafe act? Why? Because if you conform to this world, it makes you an enemy against God. And the Lord Jesus said, don't fear man who can just destroy the body, but fear the one who can destroy the body and the soul, which is God almighty. Right. So you don't want to be an enemy against all uh, against God almighty. Right. Because if you love this world, you conform to this world after he's given you grace through his son, Christ Jesus, after he sacrificed his son, his one and only son and gave us the truth. Right. And told us to obey it, not to hold it unrighteously. Right. Gave us a chance. Right. To not be that man dangling, dangling from the rope to obey the gospel and be saved. Right. After he given us that chance. Right. Right. And we choose. To, and if we choose to conform to this world and, and instead of taking that chance, it makes us an enemy against God. And that is a unsafe act. God said, avoid unsafe acts at all costs. Right. How do I un, how do I avoid unsafe acts by obeying the gospel of Christ Jesus by being by obeying the Holy Spirit through here who we have poured out on us generously through his sacrifice on the cross. Right. Because listen, it's a terrible and dreadful thing. The scriptures say, the holy sacred scriptures that the Lord have given us. The Lord said it is a terrible and dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. Man, and as you read the Old Testament, man, and as you read the scripture, man, like a lot of times we preach a God of love, but we don't preach a God of wrath. We don't see we 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 now we 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 know we're up on a new testament, but we forget how God dealt with his people in the old testament. He have not changed. Right? He given us great through Christ Jesus, but when God come and judge the world, man, he's gonna be serious. He bring it to hell. And see, is it a dreadful thing to fall? In the hands of the Lord when he said you wouldn't be without excuse because I have given my all to you I have moved heaven to earth. I say I have shaken the heaven the Lord said Man still did not repent from the wickedness of their head. The Lord said I have removed heaven and earth I have given my only son for you. You will be without excuse So it will be a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of our Lord God Almighty right so to avoid unsafe acts of conforming to this world because if you conform to this world it will make you an enemy against almighty god when you become an enemy against almighty god you fall into his hands and when you fall into his hands man it's a terrible thing because when he come wrath and paul paul is, is going to pour out on all of mankind who have not obeyed the gospel of christ jesus second if you lose your life tomorrow if you're not in the right place you will be before his wrath when he judged. You, you will be before his wrath thrown into the lake of fire. Okay. Um, the next thing the Lord said. Test. He said, drive and drive well, right? Drive well, right? And winter weather, right? Cold weather, right? This is a cold world. This is a cold world. Right? It's a lot of brokenness, it's not a hurt, it's not a pain, it's a lot of sin, it's a lot of spiritual darkness walking around in this world. It's a lot of evil spirits behind the scene that you don't see, but it takes for you to walk in the spirit to be able to see the darts of the devil, right? right? Because the Lord said in Ephesians, use the sword of the spirit, right? Man, in order for you to defeat the enemy, you have to use the sword of the spirit, man. But if you're spiritually dead or not awake, you can't even see his attacks coming. Why? Because you don't have faith. Because faith is your shield. When you don't have faith, you can't. Uh, def you can't defeat the attacks of the enemy because you no longer have your shield to block you and your faith blocks you from the darts of the enemy when you don't have that man it's destroyed because the enemy seek to steal, steal kill and destroy but Jesus I have come to give you life what life in him how do I tame that life through the gospel of Christ Jesus how do I remain in that life by abandoning the gospel and enduring to the end so he said, drive well, drive well in this winter storm, right? Drive well by having a genuine, pure love for your heart for me. And as you have that love for me, the Holy Spirit would navigate and transform you in that love so you can see what my perfect will is in the earth and navigate through this wickedness because you're walking in the light through the person of the Holy Spirit, right? right? Because you're walking in the light through the person of the Holy Spirit, right? right? I can navigate you through this darkness because you're walking in the light and you don't and you won't run into it right because Jesus when when a man walk at night he stumbles but when you walk in the light you won't stumble because the Holy Spirit is leading you leading you and guiding you right so he said drive well in this winter storm how do I drive well in this winter storm right 
by what spending time with Jesus eat his word let, let it become the nutrients of my body let it become in every part of me so even if I don't have the physical part of it right I'm still good let it become a part of me so I can know and prove what the perfect will of God is right right but because like it's finished it. you can't drive if your windshield is foggy you can't drive if your windshield is not clean you can't see even if it, it, it even if you can see a little bit you you take a risk of crashing running off the road because you can't drive well in the winter storm when snow is falling you can't see as clear as you would if the window was clean right right so the word of god is like windshield wipers right jesus christ is like windshield wiper right the Holy Spirit guides you and say, hey, turn on your windshield wipers, right? When you turn on your windshield wiper, the windshield wiper, the word of God, clean the windshield continuously so you can continuously see as you drive, man. Right? So as I use the word of God, I can clearly drive through this winter storm, this cold, this cold world, the wickedness in this world, because I can see consistently through the word of God. So, a better gospel, the second come of our Lord, his hour is at hand. He coming for all of us faithful, faithful followers, and we'll be forever with the Lord, Christ Jesus. Okay? So, let's obey the gospel, right? Let's obey the gospel and see our Lord face when he returns. Church, that's all I have for you today. And I, play, I pray, I pray that this message was a blessing to you. I pray that it guides your heart, your mind. And um and, and, and it, it, it permeates your heart and really make you grab hold of our Lord Jesus because he loves us so much and we need him and we want to see him. Man, I just imagine myself sometimes, man. Just think about it, y'all. We get up, we get up, man. We get up, we wake up. The Father said, my house is many mansions, right? We come out of the place that the Lord has prepared us. Go to the throne when we all there standing before the Lord, worshiping together. Seeing the Father, the Holy Spirit, angels, everybody there. We one big family standing before the Lord, right? Think about your close loved one, right? That you love, right? Y'all both waking up in the new heaven and y'all both in the new heaven, new earth, waking up, coming like like you coming out. Say, hey man, where you going, man? Where you going, man? I'm going to worship the Father. I'm headed to the man. I'm headed. I'm headed to. I'm headed to the worship room, man. I'm headed to the throne room. I'm, I'm headed to worship the Lord, man. Bro, you real, boy? Let me grab my stuff. I'm coming, bro. I'm coming with you, man. I'm coming to worship, man. Man, just think about being his present. Worship, man. We worship today, man, in this glorious when we worshiping with our brothers and sisters. We get a taste of heaven. Imagine, man, being in heaven, man. I know worship in heaven on like one trillion. I mean, no. I, I mean, I bet worship in heaven on like on one on, on nine hundred trillion, man. I know worship in heaven is on man, is like live, man. I just, I just the thought of worshiping in heaven, man, it just like make my heart all mushy inside man because man you love and worship the lord man just think about it. you coming out your the place that the lord have prepared for you walking with your brother sister the people that have felt the, the you, you number one you seeing jesus face first right you loving him you seeing jesus face first be a chance to love on him and hug on him and and then through that he had prepared a place for you. Then you see all the people that have fell asleep that you heard about in the scripture. People right now that you're walking beside, you see that, and we one big happy family. Sitting at the feet of the Father, getting a chance to love on him, hug on him, talk to him. He is taught teaching us stuff that we we didn't know about him. Really explain it, expose his heart to us in a way that we never have heard before. And it's just this love flowing with no pain, no more fighting with this flesh. And we just with him well, with him well. And we don't have to leave. Man, that's so glorious, man. Church, let's strive to be in that place by faith and obedience through the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus and abandon the Holy Spirit who with us and love us so much that help us every day walk this thing out to be like our Lord Christ Jesus, bringing it to remembrance everything that the Father have said through our Savior Christ Jesus who revealed himself to man gloriously and laid down his life for man and picked it up gloriously and waiting on us to get home because he loves us church let's pray um dear heavenly father in the name of jesus we thank you for your grace we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your love we thank you for your sacrificial death on the cross lord we thank you for your blood man. we thank you for your love we thank you for all the stuff that you have done for us, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. We need you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we love you so much. I just thank you for your word. Choose to preserve your word. Who are we? We are man. Lord, I love you so much. We are, Lord, we are nothing without you. Lord, 
I just humble myself in your presence, Lord. We just humble ourselves in your presence. We just said thank you. We love you, and we can't wait to see your face. We pray, Lord, that we take your word seriously and we obey your word because your greatest longest, you called us to do things in this life, but your greatest longest, Lord, you do, your greatest longest is to see our face, Lord. So the most greatest thing we can ever do in this life is obey your gospel so we can see your face because this is what you want to see. This is what you've done all of this for so you can bring us home so we can see your face. We can be with you forever. So, Lord, let us live, Lord. Help us live. Give us sensitivity of your spirit. Break every yoke of the enemy, Lord. Break everything that is not of you so we can live to please your heart and give you the greatest longing of your heart, which is to see our face because you love us so much. Lord, we love you so much and we thank you for who are we. Lord, you don't need us, but you want us. Jesus, Lord. You don't need us, but you want us, Lord. And what is, is such a great gift to be wanted by an almighty God as great as you, who mighty as you, who have so much power as you, but you're so meek. It's a great gift to be wanted by you, Lord. You don't need us, but you want us, Lord, for your pleasure. Jesus, Lord, thank you for wanting us, Lord. Because without you, Lord, we will be orphans. We will be lost. We will be destroyed forever. Lord, thank you for loving us loving us jesus lord you loved us when we were sinners lord we just pray that we just warm your heart be a fresh aroma in your nostrils lord be like a fresh meal before your face lord pleasing to your most innermost part father because we are bearing your gospel in your son christ jesus and when you see us you get a chance we get a chance to smile at you and you smile at, you smile at us because we made it by bearing your word and your son christ jesus and yielding to your spirit father we love you so much jesus we love you so much holy spirit we love you so much father you are the oh man jesus god almighty god almighty you are you are you are the one and only true god thank you for all that you do and all that you bring and all that you pour out in jesus precious name we pray amen 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 Church, I love you so much. And I pray that this message was a blessing to you. I pray that it strengthened you and encouraged you. And you walk in the faith and obedience through the grace of our Lord Christ Jesus by obeying the Holy Spirit. Grace and peace be, grace and peace be with you. Be, grace and peace be with you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Obey the Spirit of God. Love you, church.